would do that, Ben. <laughs> Hello? Hi, is this Dusty? Yes, it is. All right. Well, ladies and gentlemen, we would like to welcome Roy Rogers Jr., a.k.a. Dusty Rogers, to the show. Uh, we're so glad to have you on the phone with us tonight. Oh, I'm glad to be here. How you doing, sir? I'm doing fine, Terry. How are you? Well, I want to tell you that, you know, I really appreciated your uh, mother and your father for all the great work they did because I totally grew up with your father and your mother. <laughs> It was a good time to grow up, you know. It was a good time to be a kid in those days. You Absolutely. Know? I mean, we just don't have heroes like that anymore, you know? No, and that's a shame, you know, that the kids don't have anybody today that really look up to that that is a human being that, that, that does keep his life in line, you know. And uh, it's a shame because the, the kids sure could use it today. You know, the thing that I always wondered about being, you know, uh, their child, and, of course, you had many other brothers and sisters, I, they adopted a lot of kids too, right? They did, yeah. Myself and my sister Linda were uh, Roy's natural children from uh, his first wife. And then uh, when my, my mom died at childbirth, giving me birth, mm -hmm. and then he married uh, Dale about when I was about a year and a half old. And, and then they started adopting kids. They had one little girl between the two of them, Robin Elizabeth, who passed away from Down syndrome mm -hmm. at the age of two. And then they just started adopting kids and ended up with four adopted and one foster. And the rest of us are just kind of his and yours and lessons and our There was I mean, nine of us all together. Way before <laughs> uh, Brad and, uh, you know, his wife, you know, they were always known, you know, nowadays for adopting kids. It was over in, like, foreign countries. And now your mom and dad did that, too. Yeah, well, yeah, we were all we were a mixed family. We had a little girl from Scotland. And there was a little girl from Korea and a little American Indian girl. And uh, so we were kind of, we kind of had a blended family then, too. But I have to know, okay, being the son of Roy Rogers, mm -hmm. was it Western 24 hours a day, or did Roy <laughs> ever actually wear a Hawaiian shirt once in a while? <laughs> oh, yeah. He wore Hawaiian shirts a lot. He was, uh, my dad was an outdoorsman. He just loved it. And, he, and one, one, of the, one of his favorite sports was uh, racing boats. He used to, to race uh, boats from Catalina, I mean from Huntington Beach all the way out to Catalina Island and back in the 40s and 50s out there when the water was uh, uh, was really rough a lot of times and Randy racing his little small boat so I, I've seen him in Hawaiian shirts many times <laughs> <laughs> fantastic you know actually uh, I'm not sure if like you were uh, growing up with them out here I believe you were weren't they kind of located in the Apple Valley area they were they were yeah they lived in uh, they moved up in Apple Valley on my senior year in high school uh, up near Victorville and the Hesperia is kind of a tri-city area in the high desert. Uh, they were there for 35 years. It was one of those things that I should have done because I always wanted to take a, a pilgrim uh, trip out to the uh, Roy Rogers Museum. Never got a chance to, and now I have to go to Branson. You do, yeah, you do. <laughs> a lot of people did that. You know, there were a lot of folks, especially truckers and a lot of guys and gals who were going to Vegas. You know, they'd go right by there, mm -hmm. and you'd see Trigger out in front. People say, "Oh, yeah, there it is." But you know, I think. You know, when you know where there is something, uh, you, and you pass it a lot, you you just say, "Well, one of these days I'm going to catch it." And, uh, and of course, then the, the time goes by so fast that uh, right. you, you know, all of a sudden time catches up with you, and you say, "Well, boy, I missed out on that because I I, I should have stopped when I had a chance." But uh, well, I think it was probably a really we good. Love, we love it here, and we love it sure. here in Branson. and we've been here going. Well, this is five years now, and it's just been great, wonderful for us kind of the happening place it's kind of like what do you call it like the the mini nashville or something or it is as well you know it has more theater seats than broadway has and uh, uh live and it's a it's a live music capital of the world basically it has more live shows here than any, any place in town and more than vegas and more than and more theater seats than uh, than broadway so it's it's and it's seven to eight well, seven seven and a half million people a year come here so it's uh, it's, a, it's a jumping place right now it's kind of quiet but uh, spring and summer and fall, it just really jumps. Well, I bet you get this a lot, but you look so much like your dad. <laughs> yeah, people say that. I, I guess the older I get, the more I look like him, I, I think. Uh, when I was younger, uh, I looked an awful lot like him, too. But I, I, the older I get, the more people say, well, gee, you're looking more like your dad all the time. <laughs> so and my son, Dustin, who is uh, 32 years old, uh, Dustin uh, is a spitting image of his grandpa, of my dad, back when dad was doing movies, back when he was in his 30s. Very cool. So when uh, uh, you're... Jeans, go ahead. Good gene pool. Oh, yeah. So when, <laughs> when your son was growing up, did you show him, like, the movies of your dad's? And oh, yeah, then... sure. Oh, absolutely. Well, yeah, sure. And then and when he'd go see his grandpa, grandpa, of course, had to lay a few movies on him, too, you know. Right. <laughs> my, my dad was one of these guys. He never really appreciated TV much. He would watch a soap opera with mom every once in a while. But he... Uh, 
my dad was a he loved the nature shows and he loved uh, you know that kind of a thing he never and uh, the nature channel is what he liked uh, and, and some hunting shows and things like that but the mainstream television wasn't something he really cared for. He just thought that they were just showing too much to the kids, yeah. and there's too much violence. So he kind of laid off the television, but he loved playing his old movies. Well, John Ritter, the son of the great cowboy star Tex Ritter, said his dad mm-hmm. was totally his hero, and I imagine it was the same for you, right? Absolutely. Absolutely, yeah. No, I mean, my dad was uh, a, a, a bigger than life hero to a lot of kids, but I had to share him with 25 million other kids you know, <laughs> a lot of time. I didn't see him very often a lot of time because he was out making movies. At one time, he was, you know, he was turning out eight to ten pictures a year, and uh, in, in, at the, around the time I was born, and uh, so he, uh, I didn't get to see him very often. Then when he started the TV show, it, it got even worse when he was doing, you know, producing his own television show in the fifties and up into the early sixties. So, but he was, uh, I mean, he, my dad used to always say, you know, you don't have to spend every waking minute with your children, but you certainly do have to give them quality time. And that's the one thing that he did with all of the kids and adopted kids or whatever. I mean, we were all the same. didn't matter whether we were adopted or, or natural. We were all the same. And we all got special time with him. I mean, he took Sandy and I and my brother and I hunting together and fishing. And I mean, you know, when he could, uh, he couldn't do it all the time, but the times that he could, and we understood that. I mean, you know, you, you, being from an entertainment family, it just, you know, the, your dad being away, it just comes with the badge. And, of course, Mom being in the same business he was in, <laughs> she was gone with him. So yeah. we had a lot of housekeepers and things like that that took care of us a lot of times when we were young. Well, when you grew up, that was a different time. It was a time when you actually respected your parents, too. But oh, what, absolutely. What about discipline? Was he strict? <laughs> he was strict, yeah. He was strict like most dads in those days. I mean, my dad was... Uh, my grandpa, uh, Grandpa uh, Sly, was uh, he was strict with it with Dad, and 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 strict with, and Dad was with us too. Not not to, not overly strict, but I mean, you know, he he didn't. I mean, he, he 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 always thought if you were old enough to knock something off a table onto the floor, that you were old enough to learn not to knock it off, and that that was socially unacceptable. Mm-hmm. And so he, you know, he would pop you once in a while for doing something that you shouldn't do, but. Uh, <clears throat> you know, he did the old cliche of saying, you know, just wait till your dad gets home. Mm. I think we were all just more more worried about the fact that we disappointed him and that we, he would have to take disciplinary actions uh, other than just, you know, making him mad. So, so <clears throat> but he, uh, and mom was too. My mom was from Texas, you know, and mom, uh, Dale was, uh, was uh, you know, she was raised in a, in a pretty strict home too. And so uh, we, we didn't get away with a whole lot when we were kids, but we did love and respect them as they much as they did us. So. so you wanted to make sure that when they brought you out to the old bunkhouse, it was actually to saddle a horse and not <laughs> for something else. <laughs> Well, we got taken to the woodshed many times. <laughs> yeah, I think that should be the way it is nowadays, because kids yeah, nowadays well, I think, are... I think, you know, my dad, uh, you know, it was just one of those things. You knew when you did wrong in those days. There was, I mean, you know, there was a standard set, and when you when you pushed that envelope, uh, you knew that there were consequences. And today, the kids, uh, they, they don't know what the consequences are, and they, they, they have no respect for their parents or, or anything of authority. And I'm not saying all kids. I'm just saying that there are a lot of them that that grow up in an atmosphere of their parents are working. You know, and it's hard today. I mean, my both my parents worked, and I turned out all right. But a lot of the parents, both parents working, it's hard to, to discipline children. They're glatchkey kids. They come home, they're on their own, and you know, and they kind of they kind of grow up learning their their own ways of wanting to do things. And and sometimes that isn't socially correct. So, by the way, Dusty, we've gotten away from. It. With growing up watching your dad, you just told me how old your son was. You just made me feel so old. <laughs> oh, my God. <laughs> it just seems like yesterday. You know, it really, really does. <laughs> it, it, well, it does to me, too. I mean, you know, I, I think I think we all get to that age of about 25 or 30, and we just kind of stop mentally. Uh, physically, we don't, but that's where we would like to stay yeah. when we're, you know, things that were really, things were a little kinder, simpler, and, and, and we could really understand what went wrong and how things worked and I mean you know I could take a car apart and put it back together with three tools and today you can't even get the hood open right. but, I mean you know it's just a little bit different but you know I'm 62 years old now so mm-hmm. um, I think times has moved on you know well, my I'm dad only... would have been my dad would have been 97 already wow god it's just hard to conceive and I'm 52 <laughs> and wow yeah it, it does move on Let's son of a gun 
Now, you, yeah. when you were very young, actually got kind of the acting bug. You actually ended up being on your dad's show a couple of times. Did, did he, did Roy encourage that in you? No. <laughs> <laughs> no, he, he's not one to encourage. He, he, he didn't like the movie business. He made, you know, my dad made 88 motion pictures in his lifetime. Wow. And, and in, in those 88 films, he never made one dime off of any of his movies. My dad was a contract player. He he worked for the studios for a salary. You know, he got paid 75 bucks a week, uh-huh. and uh, he was turning out 8 to 10 pictures a year. And a whole but huge percentage all, of those are public domain, too, aren't they, I believe? Well, there was, yeah, there was no, yeah, the, most all of them are public domain. Yeah. Uh, and, and there was no such thing as residuals in those days. And so it wasn't until he started making his television show and starting to do merchandising that he started making any money. But up to that point, he was just, you know, just barely. In fact, he was writing, at, at one time, uh, there was over 400,000 uh, cards and letters that came in from kids per month to my dad, fan letters. Wow. And it, it, it took every bit of money he was making to send pen, send them penny, penny postcards. So. Uh, and in response, so he was he was losing money working for the movie studio, so he had to go out on the road and do state fairs and rodeos and things like that to, to make ends meet. Wow! So tell us the story about getting on your dad's show. I mean, uh, well, I I I think it was by accident. They were looking for a brat. <laughs> uh, <laughs> they were looking for someone who to play the t- play the town brat, and my dad thought, well, gee, I got the perfect character for that. So they brought me onto the set, and um, and I, I the first time I was probably oh, I don't know probably eight or nine years old, and I was kind of the town squirrel, you know, the kid that you know shot the shot the uh, the uh, uh, slingshot and hit the horse in the rear end, and mm-hmm. or I I would shoot the bow and arrow and knock the sheriff's hat off, or you know I, it was it was that kind of a thing, and then I played a juvenile delinquent when I was about 12 years old at a, at a boys' school that mom and dad were befriending or something. So I always played kind of the rotten kid in the movies, and I guess I was typecast. I don't know. <laughs> so growing up with the Western thing in your background, did you go to public school or private? We had, we had public school most of the time. My brother and I, Sandy and I, we both went to um, military academies from the time we were about fifth grade on up to probably the ninth grade. Mm. Um, and we did that because uh, mom and dad were working so much that we were we went to the boarding type school where right. we could stay, where we would stay two weeks and come home every you know every other weekend or something. I was wondering if maybe the kids teased you about the western. Oh, thing. always, always. Yeah. yeah, I got kicked. I got kicked out of kin- uh, out of kindergarten twice for fighting um, because the kids would say, "Well, you know, you know, Gene Autry was a better cowboy," so we went kind of went to Fit City on it. <laughs> 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 my my dad had to come to school twice, you know. So, so everybody but wants did, to know. You know it, Go ahead. No, it was just it was a constant thing. I mean, I mean, and you know, kids, kids are me honest. You know, they, they, <laughs> they, you know, you when you were a kid, and you wore glasses. You got four. You called not called four eyes, and if you right. had freckles, they called you speck, and you know, different things like that. Well, they would call a roll in school, and I just hated that because they get down to my name and they'd say Roy Rogers Jr. and of course I had to raise my hand and all the kids go, oh, you don't look like a horse, you know. <laughs> kind of it was so, probably the kids know, that did believe you either, you know. <laughs> well, that was another thing and I said, that didn't bother me because, you know, I said, well, I'm not tattooed anywhere, so, right. you know. Well, you could have yeah, so. shown them all up by riding Trigger to school. I mean, I would have been pretty <laughs> impressed. Well, my dad would come to school once in a while and do a do a, a thing. My dad had a safety child safety program for schools years ago, from all over the nation, and they, and it was a safety program. And for the school that did had the safest program, to where kids weren't injured or weren't knocked down in a crosswalk or injured on the school grounds, they got a special uh, dad and and the pioneers and mom would they come to the school, bring trigger, and they'd entertain the kids and uh, and bring they bring audio visual equipment and. So yeah, they had a regular whole safety program that was, that was run by a lot of the stars from Hollywood. It was very popular in the 50s. Now, we have a young lady in the chat room. She actually played Jan Brady, not in the original series, but they did a revamp of the Brady Bunch. They did a musical version. Uh, Sid and Marty Croft put it on, and she said that mm-hmm. she really misses the museum being here in the Apple Valley area. She used to go Yeah, yeah it, uh, I, I see a lot. We have a lot of the folks that come by. In fact, this last fall we had several come by um, uh, to say hi and uh, how much it... Uh, had really changed the, the whole uh, kind of the whole aura of the valley. That Roy and Dale were always there. You could always depend on running into them somewhere. And of course, 
the museum was just kind of a staple. It was just uh, constantly there, and, and now all it's gone. And they pushed the building over and built a an old uh, built a used car dealership or something on top of it. Right. I don't think the Gene Autry Museum was sorry to see you go because now they get all the business, right? <laughs> <laughs> well, Gene's museum, Gene's museum is totally different than Dad's was. Gene's, uh, my dad was just a personal museum of just his things, and he collected down through the years. And, and Autry's was more of a more of a, a Western heritage kind of mm-hmm. a thing. He covers all cowboys in expansion west and the Indians and, you know, a little bit of and And I think Gene did that because, you know, he had two terrible fires. His home uh, there in the Bel Air area burned down years ago, lost all of his personal memorabilia and clothes and things like that. And then his ranch burned, the Flying A Ranch burned up in the Simi Valley area. And he lost all of his uh, all of his vehicles and all of his wagons and a lot of his movie props and stuff went up in smoke. So he, down through the years, he lost an awful lot of memorabilia. Now, you always had a desire to be in show business. I read that. But at what point in your life did you make the conscience uh, decision to kind of like follow in, in Roy and Dale's footsteps? Because you do the whole thing. I mean, you actually do a show there in France and you sing a lot of we the do. old songs. And mm-hmm. Well, I, I started out. I wanted to do. I wanted to do movies. I, I thought you know I could be good at it, and I wanted to go to to um, uh, Pasadena Playhouse and start learning uh, in their acting school there and learn acting. And my dad never encouraged it. Like Tiffany said, did he, did he encourage it? No, he didn't. And it, and it was because he knew how rotten the business was, and he just wanted me to go, you know to to, to get a legitimate <laughs> a lifestyle and not, not not take on the work of an actor. And of course. Uh, so I, I, I never got to go to, to, to the Pasadena thing, but I did make a couple of movies. I made a movie with A.C. Lyles and Paramount Pictures uh, uh, with Howard Keel and Yvonne DiCarlo and Marilyn Maxwell and Brian Donlevy, all of the old B actors from years ago called Arizona Bushwhackers. This is a Western. When I was about 18, I did that, and then I did another movie for Youth of Christ, which was a, where, again, I played a delinquent. Um, <laughs> In it, and so I, you know, I did a little bit of acting, but I, I never, it wasn't something that I really solidly pursued. And so, when I got out of, um, uh, got out of that, I, I met my wife Linda. I went back to Ohio for a while, met my wife Linda. She and I have been married 41 years. Wow! And uh, we just, uh, I just stayed back in Ohio for six years, and then, uh, and, but I still traveled with my. We, I used to go on the road. We used to travel with them a lot. We'd go. Mom and Dad would hit the road to do the state fairs and rodeos and bring along the sons of the pioneers and the horses, and we'd do a whole act, you know, and Dad would bring several acts with him and had a shooting act, and we would sing, and, uh, you know, all the kids would sing, and Mom and Dad would sing together, and and so that the singing end of it never got out of my blood, and so when I got to California after Linda and I left Ohio, I came back to California, I started my own band called the High Riders. Mm-hmm. And uh, we did all country music at that point because Dad and the Pioneers were still doing the cowboy. Well, <clears throat> when uh, Mom and Dad kind of dropped out of the entertainment scene of it, uh, the guys and I started taking on more of the Western sound. And, and uh, big, there's a big difference between cowboy music and country music. I'm glad you said that. There is a difference. There is, yeah. Yes. Yeah, a lot of people don't understand. You know that. You know the cowboys. They they, they sing about uh, you know their horse and the cattle and the outdoors and the sunrises and the coyotes and the and the tumbleweeds and you know things like that. Where country folks sing about lying, crying, and cheating and dying. <laughs> you know, it's, it's, <laughs> I always tell people in my shows, you know, if you need to explain it to somebody, sometime, just tell them that cowboys sing about everything that takes place outside, and the country music folks uh, sing about everything that takes place inside. I guess that's true. the best way of explaining it. But yeah, I, I just uh, I started the High Riders, and we've been together this year, twenty six years. Wow! So yeah, so um, and the guys, uh, all my most all well, all of my players right now are all from California. They all moved with me uh, when we moved. They they didn't we didn't want to break the band up, and I offered them to you know if they wanted to come, they could come, and they did, and so. We we do two shows a day, five days a week here at Branson, and um, and uh, we do all cowboy music, and of course Roy and Dale, and Sons of the Pioneers music, and uh, and uh, so we you, people can come and either just see the museum or they can get a combo ticket and see the museum and us. So and the museum is uh, pretty much like it was out here. I mean, you you have trigger it, there, this yeah, stuff. Pretty and much the same. Bullet. Yeah, it's it's pretty much the same footprint. Except the only difference is where the courtyard was is now where they where we have our theater. We can seat. 
we're not huge there. We only seat about 308 people, but it's just it's just very nice and intimate. And uh, but it's the same thing. We got Trigger and Bullet and Buttermilk and Nelly Bell and all the saddles and the cars and. I mean, everything that was in Victorville is here. See, Tiff, I know that Nellie Bell's a Jeep. You wouldn't know that, would you? I, I wouldn't. I, he, <laughs> yeah, Nellie Bell's a Jeep. The old King Pancras Jeep from, from the series. I knew, I knew Trigger. I knew Trigger. And I knew the dog. Yeah. I, I remember Dale used to be on the Johnny Carson show, and she had this crazy kind of morbid at times sense of humor and she would always make joke that when Roy passed away she would stuff him like they did yeah. Trigger mm-hmm. yeah right <laughs> well she was very upset when dad had Trigger mounted but I mean you know you got to know dad's thinking Trigger was was I mean you know dad dad and Trigger worked together for over 30 years Trigger lived to be 33 years old and dad made every movie and every half hour on that horse Right. And so when when he passed away, it was like losing one of the kids, you know. So the horse really was his; it just didn't belong to the studio. It was, it was no, it was his. Yeah, he bought yeah. him way back uh, when he was about four years old, and uh, for twenty five hundred dollars. And twenty five hundred dollars in nineteen forty one was he could buy a house for it in right. those days. So, but it was just a you know it, it was a beautiful beautiful relationship. And uh, Dad and Trigger, I mean, nobody could ride better than those two, um, and they just really looked looked great. And so when he died, Dad said, "I just." Can't throw him in the ground. Let the worms yeah. eat him up. I have to, I have to put him up there and have him mounted and put in the museum. And so he's there. And then that's me. Yeah, mom used to always say, "Well, you know, when when you die, I'm just going to skin you out and put you up on it." <laughs> <laughs> and dad would have loved it, I'm sure. You know, but I think there were laws against it. Yeah. Right. Uh, one of the things that, that really uh, I'm sure was uh, pre- present and, and prevalent into your childhood is that Roy and Dale's very religious, weren't they? Very much so. Yeah. I mean, you know, they, um, they, uh, and my mother probably was, uh, Dale was probably, uh, you know, more of the, more staunch of a Christian than my father was. My dad <clears throat> had a hard time early on understanding why if we had such a just God, he used to go and visit the kids in the hospitals, you know, mm-hmm. years ago. When in the 40s, especially, uh, polio was so bad in this country, and there were so many young children being stricken by it. And his own, his mother, my grandmother, was stricken by it, and she had a shriveled leg, a left leg for years. And and so Dad, you know, had an affinity for it. And every time he, he would go to the hospital and see all these kids in these iron lungs, he just said, if we had such a just and loving God, why does he allow this to happen? And so he had a little bit of he had a little bit of difficulty dealing with that. But my mom and dad, you know, my mom's you know the good Lord taps you on your shoulder sometimes to get your attention, sometimes he hits you mm-hmm. with two before. And, mm-hmm. and, but with mom, she just she she stayed on him, and uh, and they were both very religious and the very uh, very um, uh, had an affinity for everybody that was in the, that was either downtrodden or sick or. Whatever they were always uh, always out there trying to help where they could and uh, and I think that's what everybody loved about Roy and Dale. They walked the walk and talked the talk. They just seemed like, they seemed to be very out there, very uh, interested in what you're doing and and listening to you and and just loving everybody, especially the children. And I think I think people knew that and they and they took to them very, very much. A, uh, I, I can't think of two husband and wife stars that uh, that, that had as much effect on the world as those two did. My dad. I mean, he had two and a half million members of his writers' club. The little kids rode in his club for from the '40s on up into the '60s, and and uh, and that's just in the United States. Worldwide, there was over five or six million. So, well, there's two people that never let me down, and that was, of course, you know, both Roy and Dale, and then mm-hmm. another one, or the third one was was Clayton Moore, who was a Lone Ranger. I mean, they they were Clayton what they was, were. Clayton was uh, again another one of those fellows who you just knew. That he walked the walk, and, t- and I mean, you know, anybody that was going to be the Lone Ranger, he was the best one. I mean, there were a lot of them down through the years, but nobody played the part as well on and off the screen as as well I mean, as well as Clayton did. And when they had that big stink at the studio, studio somebody bought the rights to the Lone Ranger, and they wouldn't let him wear his mask. Yeah, yeah. Well, I mean, I was so mad, and I think half the country was too. But uh, he was again. He he worked in my dad's movies as a heavy, as a as a bad guy years ago, and I got several pictures of him that he and dad got in a fight in a couple of the movies, and 
dad knocked him into the creek. And, <laughs> but he was a great guy, Clayton was. And up to the day he died, he was the Lone Ranger as far as I was concerned. My favorite story about Clayton is there was a stand-up comedian, and he was doing an appearance with Clayton, actually had a car dealership. And they were on their way to the car dealership, and they got stopped, and the police officer said they were speeding, and the stand-up comedian who was driving had Clayton in the back of the car. And he was trying to explain to the cop that, you know, they had to get to the show, but they weren't speeding. And he was like, officer, I know you don't believe me. All of a sudden, Clayton steps out, and he goes, but he'll believe me. <laughs> 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 yeah, you know, it's all about giving the ticket to that. And then my dad's gotten out of that tickets a couple times that way too. I bet he has. For the highway patrolman will just get out of the car, sir, and when he sees who he is, uh, he just he just hugs him and put, says, tells him to go down the road. And the dad says, "Aren't you going to give me a ticket?" And he says, "Are you kidding? Did I give Roy Rogers a ticket? I'll be laughed out of the precinct." <laughs> Everybody's wanting to know, like when you were growing up, where everybody else was was learning reading comic books and learning this or learning that if you were studying rope tricks and stuff. <laughs> if I was studying what? Rope tricks. Rope, oh, yeah. Well, sure. I mean, you know, I learned everything. I, I, you know, I learned to spin the guns, and I, I learned to ride, and I learned to rope, and I learned, you know, I learned. We we lived on a ranch, so we had all the horses. We All of the kids had horses, and we, you know, you learned to ride. You learned to to take care of the horses and you you know learn to saddle and unsaddle and and all of the uh, all the tricks of the training and and of course spinning the guns and and roping is all part of it so yeah I spent a lot of time doing that so exactly where what was that that's just every kid likes to do what their dads are doing most of the time. And well, some I mean, do. What other? I mean, <laughs> when you were a kid in the fifties, I mean, you maybe you weren't, but I mean, what what else would you want to do than be able to play cowboy all day long? Right. Some of the more decent kids of celebrities, like yourselves, that carry on tradition, rather than some that write nasty books about their parents or whatever. Oh, well, I would never do that. I wrote a book called Growing Up with Roy and Dale. It's very complimentary. It's more. It's, it's just more of the funny stuff that uh, that happened in our family. But no, I mean, you know, when you love and respect somebody, uh, it's, it's as much as I did, my parents and and and, the, and and all of the things that they gave us, both spiritually and 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 morally, and uh, I mean, you just I, I think young people do that sometimes to spite their parents, and it, there's no may may not be any truth to it, or, or it might be exaggerated, but and they do it just so they can, you know, make points, but uh, you know. In most cases, uh, and a lot of the stuff is made up. But uh, my parents were, you know, we were at odds every once in a while on certain things. But uh, you know, I always just respected their opinion and 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 uh, and, and loved what they told me. And, uh, and and of course, as I got older, I found out they're pretty smart folks. Right. I have to be getting out to Branson. I'm trying to visualize what it's like. Is it kind of like Vegas where it's like all on one strip together or how is it Branson is, like It is. It's called it 76 Boulevard. It's kind of all on one strip but it's, it's totally different because we sit in the Ozark Mountains and so the, 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 it, lung, it runs along kind of a mountain ridge and there's a lot of lakes around it and it's all wooded so there's a lot of green here which you don't see in Vegas at all hardly. But it's not near, it doesn't have the, it, it's not a big flashy uh, thing like Vegas. There's no gambling here at all. Mm -hmm. So you don't you don't have that element to deal with, and you don't have the guys pushing uh, flyers on you onto you on the strip and stuff like that. This is very family oriented, and this is the reason why we picked this area. Sure, uh, this sets this sets uh, you know within within uh, uh, a day's drive of of Branson is two thirds of the nation's population. And the people can get to us with, you know, four and five hundred miles out. I mean, they're, 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 they come in here by the droves. And, and why? They come here and they bring their families because you can bring all your kids to any show in Branson and you'll never be worried about them being offended. There's no, there's no off-color jokes. It's all, it's all family, uh, oriented. All the, all the restaurants are that way. And, and this is, this is just sits more or less in the Bible Belt area of this, of the United States. Mm -hmm. And, and I think that's why people love it so much is they don't have any problems with coming and, and listening to entertainment or there's no scantily clad women dancing all over the place here. It's, uh, it's just, uh, it's just kind of homespun comedy and, and, uh, you know, we, Andy Williams is here and, you know, you know how Andy is, so uh, Absolutely. there's just a lot of great Jim Stafford is here, and and and, and uh, Kathy Rigby's here with Peter Pan now. The Titanic Museum is in town, and 
Dolly Partners, Dollywood, or not Dollywood, but um, uh, Dixie Stampede is here. And one of my Dick favorites, Clark. Ray Stevens, yeah. is there. Yeah, Dick, Dick Clark Theater's here. I mean, you know, it's just there's just a bunch of just really great down home people, and people just love to come and listen to them. And of course, they have the, those Ark Mountain comedy and shows with the Presleys and the Bald Knobbers, mm-hmm. the families that have been here doing shows for 40 years. So, so you do your it's your shows every place. day. And uh, uh, aside from you do your shows every day, and aside from doing, go ahead. Every day, yeah. Mm -hmm. And aside from doing your shows, do you have like special events? Well, we have a lot of events. You know, a lot of different events. Uh, Events, you said. Well, you know, like maybe you do like a a steer roping contest or something. I don't know. Maybe. Well, we have a we have a fundraiser every year, and we have a shooting gallery for the kids, and we have roping steers for the kids. There you go. You know, there's a lot of things that the kids do, and of course we have. And that we have an awful lot of homeschooled kids that come to the museum because uh, part of their curriculum is if if they want to watch good movies that they'll watch Roy Rogers movies. And mm-hmm. so uh, we get a lot of kids that know Roy. And so, yeah, we have roping steers here for the kids. And we have horse, little uh, stationary horses they can sit and ride, change change all kinds of hats. We got all kinds of hats for them to wear. And cool. we got rubbing stones and uh, we run the Pecos Bill, a movie my dad did for Walt Disney back in the in the, in the forties and so I mean you know we got a, it's just a, a lot of stuff for the kids to do here in Branson. Well so maybe sometime we'll have to make it out to Branson and if we do you have to treat, teach me some rope tricks that's the only well, thing. Well that's, that's no problem I, <laughs> my son's been out to the kind of they call that cowboy art mm-hmm. uh, uh, cowboy arts and they, and they have a big convention that goes on in Vegas every year um, for it and they have you know several hundred or several thousand people that come out for it and and it's the guys that spin the ropes that you know the throw knives and hatchets and all kinds of you know all of the all of the stuff that cowboys would have done on the plains years ago boy cowboy uh, movies have sure changed because back in the day we had your dad's films and then now they brought out stuff like Brokeback Mountain which was a little unusual you know, I, I, you know, one thing I'm glad my dad wasn't alive to see that he would have he would have just absolutely been beside himself. That's what I, I thought. Uh, yeah. You know, I mean, I, yeah, I mean, good lord, I mean, <laughs> my dad was one that just said, you know, I'd ask him one day in the in the eighties. They said, Roy, you know, I heard a reporter asking from L.A. They said, Roy, uh, what do you think of the movies being made today? He said, I got to tell you, son, there's some here I wouldn't even want Trigger to watch. <laughs> <laughs> wow. So what's what's the That's best why way? Dad went to the, Go ahead. <laughs> That's why you went to the Nature Channel on TV. <laughs> Absolutely. So if somebody wanted to take a trip out to Branson and they want to see your shows, is it best to make a reservation? What is that, on Roy yeah, Rogers? Can, I mean, the best way to do it, I mean, I, I'm, 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 I'm an, an, one of those old cowboys. It's kind of hard to change, but I do understand the Internet now. So, uh, But, you know, they can, we, we have a website at www.royrogers.com. It's just a no-brainer. And you can get on there, and it has the, everything about the museum, everything about rants, and everything about our shows, all of the ticket prices, of the schedules, and that's the best way to do it, you know. Or they can, or they can, you know, call us here in Branson, Missouri, too, if they if they want. Go ahead, you can give all that information, Dusty. Oh well, yeah, yeah. It, it, well, it's four one seven three three nine one nine two five is the is the phone number. Four one seven three three nine one nine two five. But again, www.royrogers.com. Just don't put a D in Rogers, or you might end up on some other site that you don't want to see. Right. <laughs> 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 well, I, I have to tell you, Dusty. Before we go, of course, it's been a, a huge honor having you on the show. And when we actually started doing the radio show, because my dad actually started it, and he brought me into doing radio with him, mm-hmm. and. Right. Uh, one of his icons growing up, like he told you, was was your dad. And so every night when we would end our show, we would play Happy Trails at the end of well, our sure show. Sure, you have to do that. We have, we end our show with it too. I mean, you know, my mom would send the lightning bolt down on the stage if I didn't. <laughs> mom wrote that back in the fifth. In fact, that song was just nominated into the Grammy Hall of Fame. So well, there you go. Yeah, just this last week, so it was so really nice. I have to ask, because a lot of our listeners that are in our chat room are asking, is there any way we could persuade you to give us a couple of notes from Happy Trails? Uh, you mean just the song? Yeah. Uh, well, I can sing it to you. That's, what, that's, we're, that's what we're asking. <laughs> <laughs> if, oh, okay. if you don't want to, you don't have to, but it would be an extreme honor if you could, yeah. Oh, sure. No, that's no problem. I, you know, at 10 o'clock at night, our time has... <laughs> I'm a, you know, being 62, I'm only past my bedroom. Bedtime about a half hour. I, I didn't that's know no if problem. you wanted to do it a cappella or if you had your, as they call guitar there. <laughs> no, I, I sing it a cappella. Okay. I do a lot of songs a cappella. 
So you ready? We're ready. Okay. Happy trails to you until we meet again. Happy trails to you. Keep smiling until then. Who cares about the clouds when we're together? Just sing this song and bring the sunny weather. Happy trails to you till we meet again. Fantastic. Okay. Everybody says you have a fantastic voice, and they think you sound just like your dad, just the way you look like your dad. Absolutely. Oh, yeah. We, we, we got to, like I say, the genes run pretty deep in our pool here. Right. <laughs> Well, we want to, of course, encourage everyone to head out to Branson and stop on by. You can check out yeah, information. Yeah, you need to do that. And if you want to relive your memories a little bit and bring back some childhood or even introduce your kids to uh, the hero that you loved when you were a child, and bring them by. Absolutely. We're trying to keep keep Royendale's lives and, uh, alive, and uh, and it's been working out pretty well for us here. But we sure could use uh, some more folks when they get it. If you're coming this way, come see us. And you know they were both great men, but I think it was a little cooler to be Roy Rogers' son and Mister Rogers' son. <laughs> well, that's true. Yeah, I, I don't think I'd ever get a chance to wear the sweater, but. I, 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 <laughs> I get to do, I get to, I get to wear the, the the western shirts and the white hat, so I'm I'm happy with that in the boots. So. Very cool. Well, thank you so much for being on the show, Dusty. Tiffany and Terry, thank you so much. God bless you guys. And uh, and if you all find yourself coming this way at all, I'd sure love to have you come by. Absolutely. absolutely will. And and you'll make sure that you'll give us the barbecue and the beans and. Uh, absolutely. Okay. Absolutely. <laughs> Nothing better than that. Okay. okay happy trails. Happy trails, guys. Bye bye. Bye bye.